Hi, I'm Steve, and this is a Photoshop quick take on the Blur Gallery's new noise feature. So I'm going to take this image through a couple of steps to get a Blur Gallery blur filter onto this image. First, I'm going to turn this layer into a smart object by right-clicking on the layer and choosing Convert to Smart Object. That way I can run a smart filter. I could also go Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. But either way, I'm going to now choose Blur Gallery, and I'm going to choose the Tilt Shift. Blur. With the tilt shift blur, I'm going to add a fair amount of blur. That looks pretty good. Now, if I zoom in, and I'll just press Command and the plus key on a Mac or Control and the plus key on Windows to zoom into this image and then press the space bar to turn my cursor into the hand tool, I see that this image has a grain structure. This was originally shot on Kodachrome 200, which is a fairly grainy film, and then scanned. But this could be grain, it could be noise. It really doesn't matter for the feature that I'm going to show you. So whether you have a high ISO image that has a fair amount of noise in it, or a film scan that has a grain structure to it, you'll love this feature. What I'm going to do is move up with the hand tool so that we can see our transition area a little better. And what we see with the blur gallery with transition areas when you have noise or grain is that you'll see the noise and in the sharp area or the unblurred area of the image, but then when you get into the blurred area, the noise disappears because the noise is being blurred. But of course, what you want is a photorealistic effect where the noise would be continuous. The blur is simply affecting the overall image, not the grain structure or the image noise. So that's where our new feature in Photoshop CC 2015 comes in. We have a new tab over here in the this panel down here in the Blur Gallery filter to the right of Effects, and it's called Noise. Click on Noise, and for Noise, you want to drag the Amount slider up until you see a amount of noise that matches the grain or noise in your image, not more. And that's key, because if you add more noise than what's in your image, you're going to see a harsh cutoff. So I'm just going to drag that noise slider up to match the noise with the noise in the image. I'll drag that amount slider to the right, and that looks pretty good. But I also see that the noise that's in this image, or the grain structure in this case, has a lot of color to it. And if you're familiar with noise, you know that noise can be monochromatic or color noise. In this case, there's a lot of color noise, and we do have a color slider. So I'm going to drag the color slider to the right to better match the color noise or color grain structure in the original. And from there, I could play around with the size and the roughness of the noise as well. This is looking pretty close, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there's the result, our blurred image with the tilt shift blur blurring the top and bottom of the image, drawing the eye into the central focus area. But if I zoom in, I see that the image's original noise structure is carried on from the sharp area throughout the blurred portions of the image. And that makes this much more natural, makes your blurs much more natural. That's Blur Gallery's new ability to add noise in Photoshop CC 2015. And if you have an image that's shot with a high ISO, or you have a film scan, you'll want to use the noise feature in the Blur Gallery. Enjoy this Photoshop quick take. I'm Steve Weinrieb, and I'll see you in my next video. Hey, check out my seven-hour masterclass on toning color and black and white photography in Photoshop, available at Udemy. It's a comprehensive class for all levels of experience, guaranteed to get you comfortable using Photoshop like a pro. See you in the classroom.